The George Soros-backed uh, OCCRP group has published a report on the Adani Group alleging insider trading via two foreign investors. Now, the Adani Group has rejected the report categorically. In a detailed response, the group uh, has said that uh, these are the same old lies um, which they've rejected, old allegations recycled in the report, and the OCCRP uh, is uh, funded by the billionaire George Soros, and that this is another attempt to revive the Hindenburg report, another attempt uh, by short sellers to make a profit, that these short sellers are under a multi-agency probe. The Adani Group says that there is no irregularity found in uh, the judicial and the Department of Revenue Income probe, uh, that foreign investors already have been probed by SEBI, that the Supreme Court panel didn't find any violation of shareholding norms, and that the Supreme Court and SEBI probes just must be respected. Now, it's also important to know, you know, who is behind the report and the timing. Now, who is behind the OCCRP report? The OCCRP stands for the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. It's funded by George Soros. Soros has uh, his uh, Open Society Foundations, which have funded OCCRP. The timing is curious in all of this. The role of Soros needs to be looked at closely since he's somebody who's targeted India in the recent past as well. He's been accused of funding attacks on elected governments. In fact, the Press Trust had preempted a report by this Soros-funded group uh, just a couple of days back. So this is what I was referring to. The timing of the report is also suspect because um, and, and there are question marks in the timing. Why? Because there is a multi-agency probe against short sellers. The Enforcement Directorate has named 18 entities that profited uh, after Hindenburg. A prominent banking entity among those who profited uh, was named. The Enforcement Directorate is waiting for SEBI action before initiating a money laundering probe. The IT department is also probing if these entities profited from Hindenburg. Uh, well, joining us um, on this part of this program, uh, uh, Ashwani Dubey, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, uh, also Nalin Kohli, Senior Advocate in the Supreme Court, uh, and also uh, a BJP leader. But uh, before we try and break down a lot of what I have uh, sort of explained to you, let's listen into what Rahul Gandhi had to say today um, at uh, this big beat of India in Mumbai. At the very least, a JP sh JPC should be allowed and a thorough investigation should take place. I don't understand why the Prime Minister is not forcing an investigation. All right, I don't know why the Prime Minister is not forcing uh, an investigation, Rahul Gandhi saying that. So let's just try and uh, sort of address some of the queries which have been raised through the day by the Congress Party. Uh, Nalit, let me come to you first. Now, as per the expert committee appointed by the Supreme Court, there is no evidence um, of any breach of minimum uh, public shareholding requirements or of manipulation of stock prices. Now, if, if this is what has been looked at or decided by this expert committee, then how do we or how, why should anybody necessarily discount this um, at this juncture? It shouldn't be discounted and it raises a pertinent question. What does the Congress party, and in particular Mr. Rahul Gandhi, really believe in? Do they believe in the law of the land? Do they believe the Honorable Supreme Court of India? Or do they believe in recycled misinformation being put out by vested interests and uh, reports coming from overseas? It's a fundamental question. And one will wonder where the Congress party stands. Does it stand for India and Indian institutions? Or does it believe in the credibility of something that is published based on incorrect information, as seems to be available in the public domain, and based on perhaps vested interests against uh, working against, in this case, a particular group? Now, the primary allegation in all of this is of crony capitalism, of an alleged link between the Prime Minister and the Adani group. How would you respond to this? Well, the Congress Party is really the fountainhead of crony capitalism, if at all, in this country. You only have to study history. Mr. Rahul Gandhi evidently is not a student of history, and his advisors certainly don't seem to appreciate history and facts. That is crony capitalism. What has stopped is crony capitalism under Prime Minister Modi's government. Because ruthlessly, corruption has been weeded out. There is not a single 
um, allegation of uh, you know favoring or corruption against anyone. And each false attempt that has been raised again and again by Rahul Gandhi ji and the Congress Party has been uh, repudiated, including by rule of law and no less than the Honorable Supreme Court of India. Now, the other issue, Nalin, is of foreign interference groups like to George Soros, allegedly, uh, you know, who, who allegedly interfere in matters of foreign countries, including India. Apparently, they've been involved in some aspect or uh, perhaps in pushing out these reports. So ahead of G20, which is just a few days away, the state elections, the national elections next year, do you believe that the timing of these reports needs to be looked at? For once, I will perhaps borrow from what the Congress party does. It raises questions on the timing. But this time, they are guilty about not actually looking at it from the perspective of timing. The timing of this report is not just suspect. It's questionable. It's about the timing in terms of the G20. The timing in terms of the Congress party and Mr. Rahul Gandhi holding a convention in Mumbai trying to establish that they are an alternative. A conglomeration of different political parties does not make them an alternative. There's clarity who's the leader, where the BJP is concerned, NDA is concerned, it's Narendra Modi ji. There's clarity of the agenda of governance. There's clarity about the performance. But on the other hand, there is a lack of clarity. It is personal interests versus, say, the politics of service. So there are things like this. And this report is 100% suspect in terms of its timing. There's no doubt about it. It almost seems as if it has been introduced to craft that a press conference could take place by Mr. Rahul Gandhi for him to have something to speak about. What I find curious is, and it is a, it is a fact that an independent adjudicating authority, uh, also an appellate tribunal, they both confirmed that there was no over-invoicing and that these transactions were in accordance with applicable law. Um, and, you know, there was a finality uh, in just a few months back in March when the Supreme Court, uh, you know, did rule in favor of the Adani group. So this is, as I understand it, uh, and I've gone through uh, the allegations closely, essentially raking up a matter which has been dealt with legally. That's why it's critical to say Mr. Rahul Gandhi and the Congress Party are running down Indian institutions and the institutional framework. And that's a fair question to ask what you've asked, Vishnu. Additionally, Mr. Rahul Gandhi and the Congress Party are now guilty, in a sense, figuratively speaking, of actually pandering to foreign interests. So earlier, Mrs. Indira Gandhi used to always say there's a foreign conspiracy. Perhaps Mr. Rahul Gandhi only looks back to his grandmother and understand the lesson that she left behind. They only have to go back to the history of what the Congress Party through the 70s and 80s used to say. But Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who... Okay. seems to have been, since we don't have details of his educational qualifications and institutes of study, seems to have spent time abroad. Now, one would wonder whether he went abroad to actually study or perhaps has learned things uh, that go against India's interests. Isn't the larger issue about how the Enforcement Directorate has found that 18 companies, including um, foreign portfolio investors, foreign institutional investors, uh, in, in tax havens, that these people were top beneficiaries from short selling, uh, you know, Adani Group company shares before the uh, Hindenburg report actually came out. And therefore, isn't this, you know, I mean, more significantly about how this resulted in a crash in the market, which affected millions of investors, shareholder money uh, being eroded, evaporating. Isn't that what we should be looking at? And I certainly hope that the investigative agencies hold people responsible. And I certainly hope that somebody raises it in a court of law. Because at the end of the day, who is George Soros? George Soros is an individual. He's a businessman. He's an investor. And he has crafted what seems to be from media. I don't know him personally. I don't seek to know him personally either. He seems to have crafted this so-called position as if he's fighting for democracy. But he makes money by investing, and there seems to be, what the media indicates, a pattern to this kind of volatility that seems to help him in the share market or in investments. So one would now, the answer would have to lie with Mr. Rahul Gandhi and those who are using Mr. Soros's this agenda to further their own political thing. Agenda. Is there a connect? Is there some kind of meeting of objectives? Because at the end of the day, 
when the market crashes, Indian citizens uh, uh, suffer. Indian capitalism suffers. That's not crony capitalism. That is mm -hmm. Indian capitalism. And this is Indian capitalism that is going abroad and actually taking over global, uh, global uh, business interests. So instead of us seeing an outward looking India, that is now Indian multinationals, somewhere or the other, uh, somewhere or the other, one would feel that foreign multinational interests by vested investor groups like perhaps Mr. George Soros and his company uh, are the beneficiaries of this kind of information that is not based on fact. All right, Alan, thanks very much uh, for being with us. I'm now joined by Ashwini Dubey. You've been waiting very patiently, Mr. Dubey. Thanks uh, once again for being with us. Uh, you know, is it not strange that neither uh, India's stock market regulator or for that matter a high-level expert committee uh, which was appointed by the Supreme Court were able to prove that some foreign owners of Adani stocks are fronts or, or alleged fronts for the majority owners. In other words, we've had both of these institutions, these bodies, our stock market regulator, uh, also this high-level expert committee, try to look for this evidence. They've not been able to do this at all. Uh, I mean, is the entire system fixed, as some would allege, or do we need to actually trust at least some elements of our system and our judicial process? Just see, before few few weeks back, one report came published in a newspaper on a foreign soil. On the basis of that, a huge cry started in the country. Matter reached to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, leaving all the judicial work, appointed a committee led by a former Supreme Court Chief Just Justice A.M. Sapre, along with other key note, along with other persons. That committee did not find any fault. Our agency says that there is no fault, but is still on the basis of a report. That report, which was published in a foreign soil, with the people who are with the vested interests, on the basis of that, the constitutional machineries are being misused. Point one. Point two, whom will you believe in our agencies, agencies which are working within the constitutional framework, agencies which are amenable to the countries? judicial authorities, agencies which are fairly submitting report in court, finding those reports to be correct, or a newspaper report, report published by certain people who are against the economic growth of the country, who does not want India to become an economic growth, economically strong. Mm -hmm. Third, in Rafael case, you see what has happened. In Rafael case too, the report was published in France by certain people, based on that, you have also discussed, I have also discussed what Supreme Court says, nothing wrong has happened. In Hindenburg, you see, in Pegasus, you see, on each and every time you find that a report has been published on the basis of this investor's money, which have been invested in a company's account, that investor's money should go and company should, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the company which has given appointment to so many people, company who is working for the growth of the country, against that, these people are trying to to make the comments which are biased and that too which are uh, which have been published in newspaper on a vested interest. No, so let's talk a little bit more about this groups linked to George uh, Soros, um, you know, notorious for interfering in the matters of various countries. It has been alleged uh, that he's been pushing these groups. Is the timing curious ahead of elections and G20? Yeah, timing, so timing is important. See, in, on 7th, 8th, 9th September, the, all the uh, country heads are visiting this in India. It is such a glorious moment at this point of time, selecting outrage, selectively making allegations. And also, you see, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, if that matter is will not, uh, if not mentioned in the Supreme Court, I wonder, it will be mentioned by certain people, people who are acting at the behest of the, uh, the, the those who are against the economic of instability of this country. The use, misuse and abuse, all three things are there. When it is, it comes to the use, then the constitutional machineries can be, the constitutional methods can be invoked. But when, mm -hmm. with the certain biased delegations, with the people who are, with the vested interest comes and you, you misuse and abuse the machineries, then there is a question. Just a separate committee did not find any wrong earlier. Yeah. He did not find any wrong. So ultimately, we have to believe our agency. What has happened in Pegasus? In Pegasus also, when Justice Ravindran committee said that you submit your mobile phones, nobody came forward and submitted mobile for forensic examination. 
ultimately what happened there so like hindenburg me, also let me, what let happened? me ask you this let me ask you this the adani group is clear that the allegations are on the basis of closed cases from a decade ago the directorate of revenue intelligence had probed these allegations of over invoicing transfer of funds etc etc so it's not just hindenburg and these allegations now it's been looked at many many years back so again uh, is this not reopening something which has been investigated and and ruled on that that has happened in rafales also supreme court three judges bench has said that there is no no uh, irregularity so that the price fixation is concerned there is no irregularity so the purchase is concerned but despite that those issues were read similarly the same thing in a closed case is being by the same people those the allegations of whom have been found to be vague fake and the committee has said in that the price rise was justified here also whereas the justice am suppress committee the report has been submitted supreme court has also not found any flaw flaw in that so yeah. in the closed case which is being opened at a time when country is going to host the g20 delegation all right thanks very much ashwini dubey for uh, for joining us